Okay, uh, after reviewing last week's uh, game film, um, you know, overall we were definitely happy that uh, that we won 1-0 in the SEC. A lot of areas to improve in, um, made, made some mistakes. We will uh, work very hard this week on correcting those. Uh, playing a uh, very solid San Jose uh, State team. Uh, they played very well their first game. They've had a little extra time. I think they played on a Thursday uh, to prepare and rest up. Uh, I believe the last time they played a ranked opponent, it was Fresno State, and they actually won the game. So we're going to have to be uh, prepared. Uh, we're going to have to play well. Uh, their quarterback goes 22-25, three touchdowns. He throws it extremely well. He's got some good targets to, to throw to. Their defense did a solid job. Their head coach, uh, everywhere he's been, he's won. So uh, you know, we're expecting their best. And like I said first, we're going to have to play better, and we're going to have to improve from uh, week one to week two. Questions? I guess what are some of those things you need to improve on? You know, just really the overall execution, offensively and defensively and special teams. You know, the great thing about a first game is, you know, that's usually you improve more from the first game to the second game than you do all year, and, and that's what we have to do. Uh, you know, compared to last year, we made less mistakes, but still there's so many uh, things that, you know, need to be tweaked right there. We need to make sure our alignment's correct. And uh, the things that you know uh, allow you to execute a play or a defense or a special teams play. How was the pace of the offense? I know it obviously it was with Jeremy in there and Nick. Was it where you thought it would be? Or I mean, you know, I was pretty well pleased. You know, especially after we got first down, so we got the ball rolling and our guys lined up quick, and I thought they did a did a solid job. Because how, how much did it help when the game tied at half and it hadn't gone great? Yeah. That you got all these guys that. Had, been there and done yeah, that so many times. It, it was it, it was very comforting to go in the locker room and see the way our guys were ready to respond. There wasn't any panic. Um, they'd been there before. Um, they'd experienced that feeling before. And the great thing is our coaching staff um, had experienced that numerous times last year. And so uh, they just listened up. Um, you know, the coaches made some adjustments. They went out there and executed and uh, really raised their level. You know, because the first game there's a lot of feeling out time. You know about hey, what's the new schemes they're trying to throw at us and all that? Need to make adjustments and our guys settled down and, and played a very good half of football. You know after halftime. You guys have been very comfortable with Jeremy in practice and even last season. But when he performs at that level in that setting, do you, does that mean you may have a bigger role even than you would initially plan? Well, we, we, first of all, we we knew pretty much that confirmed what we thought about Jeremy. You know. Uh, We've been saying for a long time that, that he's a very talented quarterback. It was good to see him go out there and perform like that. And uh, you know, we were very impressed with the coaching staff. But, you know, we said he'd have a role uh, even before that game, and he will. And, and each week uh, it could possibly be a little different. Can you talk about Corey Grant's run, and particularly that last touchdown up the middle? Yeah, yeah. Corey is, uh, you, you know, last year he was mainly pri primarily outside. Now he's really doing a solid job with his inside running. Uh, he'll get more and more comfortable as the season goes on. What I liked about Corey is he finished runs. I mean, he was looking to, to get his pads low and looking to finish and run people over. And uh, so that was, and it was him and Cameron are playing both. I mean, that was the thing from the running back standpoint that I was proud of. You continue that approach with putting Cameron out there first and, and then mixing Corey in as you did last yeah, week? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just see each game could be different. Like I said, we feel very good about both of them. I know Cameron had a very good first game, but we feel very good about Corey too. Do you feel like that one week to another, it might be Corey that has 26 carries? and It, it, it could be. I mean, we're, we're, op you know, we're going into this thing each week. Uh, like we said, 1-1-8. One, one, uh, you know, so we, we feel good about both of them. Gus, how much has Corey improved from a strength standpoint? You know, Corey's always been a strong guy in the weight room. I mean, he's physically strong, and I think he is getting, you know, anytime you run the ball downhill in spring and uh, everything that goes with that, he's getting more comfortable and uh, finishing runs. But he's a very strong young man, and uh, he's getting his pads down low and, uh, you know, not doing a lot of dancing in between the tackles and just hitting it. And so uh, that's made a big difference. Yes, would you talk about Melvin Ray and the impact he's, he's had? You, you, Melvin Ray, uh, you know, I was real happy for him Saturday because he has been probably the most consistent receiver that we've had in ball camp. 
uh, leading up to the game, just wanting to practice, practice extremely hard, doing all the little things right in practice, and he was rewarded with uh, a very good game. Uh, he's a guy that, uh, he's a veteran guy, he, he understands defenses, he's a good blocker, um, and he made two big impact plays to help us win that game. Seems like Cameron Ross Payne has runs with more of a chip on the shoulder, wanting to prove that he can do it all. You see that? You see a little fire? Yeah, I think that's fair to say. Uh, he he really uh, he, he does have that attitude. You know, he lost a little bit of weight. I think he's a little quicker, a little faster than he was last year. But uh, he's had a good fall camp too, and it was good to see him. Um, you know, be successful, and I think that'll help him. You know, with, with his confidence, you know, moving forward. Yeah, let's talk about the, the pass rush. I mean, Ellis talked about that's kind of still one of the concerned areas. Sure. What did you see out of that in the first game? Yeah, uh, you, you know, we, we definitely need to get better at a pass rush. And, uh, you know, if you think back to this time last year, it was real similar. And we got better each week. And so that's what we'll, uh, you know, work really hard to do. Gus, I asked you about the ball boy the run almost as fast as Del Grey on sideline. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think about that? Yeah, he's, uh, that was pretty impressive. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know he could run that way. I mean, we do have our ball boys fly around during practice, spotting the ball and all that, but that's the first time I really got a chance to see him, you know, turn it loose. What's he trying to accomplish there? Make sure the ball's with the line of scrimmage immediately? Is that the basic goal there? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Gus, uh, Ellis talked about some breakdowns. Kind of in the secondary was part of the issues, tight ends and just miscommunication. Mm -hmm. That was obviously an issue last year, big games, passing right. games for opponents. You're going up against a really strong passing team yeah. now. What do you have to do to shore that up? This yeah, season? there's no doubt. We are going uh, against a very good passing team. They were very good last year. Uh, their new quarterback, uh, he looks very good with a very strong arm. The receivers catch the ball, they attack the ball. So that is going to be a challenge this week, there's no doubt. You know, uh, they, uh, you know, we had a little trouble lining up early. You know, they had some new wrinkles. They were busting out of the huddle real quick, doing some things. And then our guys settled down in the second half, you know, once that uh, we kind of figured out what their plan was and, and different things like that. How was the communication on the left side of the line Saturday? Uh, I thought the communication was good. Uh, anytime, even if you got veteran guys, if you move, like Chad Slade moved from right to left or, or just the opposite, and then Avery, you moved from right tackle to right guard, right there, there's going to be – uh, some growing things that you have to go through with communication. And uh, each game, as long as we stay healthy, I feel like we'll get better and better. You can do so much in practice, but in games, you don't know what you're going to get. And so guys have to make adjustments. But I think overall for the first game, working beside new people, I, I, I felt pretty good overall. And, and the great thing is that uh, they, they want to get better, um, and, and they have that attitude. So, you know, the, the, if they stay healthy, they'll, they'll have a chance to be a really good line. Gus, in this kind of game, you try to stretch and do things differently, with all due respect to San Jose State, but do things differently offensively, defensively to see what you have or what you might no. have? No, we're going to do exactly what we feel like uh, gives us the best chance of winning. I mean, we're approaching this game just like it was last week. I mean, it's uh, we got to figure out a way to get better each week, each practice, each week. We're going to do what we do. we got to get better, and uh, that's the way we're approaching it. There won't be anything that – changes or not play the these guys as much. No, we're going at this thing, and, uh, and we're going to try to get better from week one to week two. How much on the defensive line are you all still kind of experimenting the right picks inside, outside? Well, you know, Coach G rotates guys just like he did last year, trying to, uh, you know, keep guys fresh and, and all that. And so we'll do the same thing, and, you know, as as the season gets on, going, you, you know, you'll uh, – you could see a little different things just like you did last year, but uh, – We'll still rotate guys to keep them fresh. Duke had one of the most prolific days for wide receiver here in quite some time. When you, it's, it is only one game, but how high is the ceiling for him? Do you see? I mean, is the potential like limitless for him as far as what what he can reach and how far he can go? Well, he, he's very talented, and, and we saw that in the spring. We saw that in fall camp. Um, you know, I was happy for him that he was able to transition his success and practice to the field. Um, you know, it's like anything else, the more comfortable that he feels in our offense, that's the first time he's really got out there in a, in a full-fledged game and everything that goes with that. So I really believe he'll get more comfortable as he goes. Um, but he, he did, definitely had a, uh, an outstanding game. Is there a guy he reminds you of, just that big body that's able to work in that inside role in your offense? Uh, 
not not he's a little bit different probably than we've had in the past. You know, I've had speed guys or big guys and all that, but he's probably a little bit different. You talk about Quan Bray there in the Wildcat. We saw him one snap. What yeah. what led you to, to put him back there? Is it speed? Is it looseness? Well, you, like? you know, Quan Quan played some quarterback in high school. When he was a true freshman when I was here before as a coordinator. You know, he worked a lot in the Wildcat, and uh, I trust him with the ball. Uh, he can do a lot of different things, and uh, you know, I think everybody saw in his punt returns. I mean, he really did a solid job with that. So he is uh, he's a guy that, that we trust. He's a senior. He gives us a lot of versatility. Stetson McNeil Alexander for the rest of the season. What's that? Stetson McNeil Alexander. Yeah, he's practicing and just like everybody else. And we'll, we'll see what happens. You know, everybody's got to earn their way on the field. Gus, I know you mentioned every week that you, you kind of change the game plan depending on how the defense is playing you. But considering Nick only threw six passes, do you <laughs> kind of feel like you're going to let him kind of air it out a little bit more just yeah, to kind of see it, what he can do? Yeah, like I said all offseason, our, our goal is to be more balanced. And, it just so happened that uh, we were successful doing a few things. And so, you know, as a coach, you just keep doing If something's working, you keep doing it. It's like Jeremy throwing the ball. Um, but I will say this, Nick, we have a lot of confidence in Nick throwing the ball. And I really feel like he'll be very successful this year. And I'm going to say the same thing about Jeremy. He can run the zone read and he can do all the, the running stuff that we need to do too within our offense. So uh, just each situation dictates different things. They give you something, they take away something. And, the challenge of being really good on offense is being able to take what they give you and uh, having an answer and being able to execute that answer. How much pressure does Nick being out there put on the defense? Because it seemed like things changed a lot just because they, they feared his running game. I mean, they feel his running over. Yeah, I think I think uh, a couple things happened. Uh, you know, I think our line got stronger as the game went on. Uh, I think obviously when Nick's on the field, they were concerned about him probably on the edge and opened up some alleys. For our run game, but um, you know he, he he did a solid job, and you know even in the passing game, I think what we have a drop. I mean, he did a good job when he did throw it, and we have a lot of confidence in him. Gus, you had two third shorts that just didn't go your way. Yeah, nah, we didn't execute three; they didn't go our way. I mean, well, we, I was going to say you had yeah. one uh, missed block by CJ, where you saw on the, the the replay of the yeah. game, you were pretty upset. You, was I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, you know that was the, the yeah two of the two of the things you know offensively that that uh, kind of stuck with me after the game is the third and shorts um, had a couple of breakdowns. But here's the thing about it that they're both correctable. Uh, they did catch us on a stunt, uh, a pretty good dis disguise of a stunt on the second one right there. But you know that's just a matter of our line coming together, getting used to work together, getting experience and all that. And uh, we had some new guys in some new positions, um, you know, and, and there's no doubt that, that we'll get those corrected. And uh, But that was probably one of the sore spots, you know, from my standpoint, the, the two third and shorts. But we'll get it corrected. Robinson's are easy to knack for making those kind of flashy plays. Is that is that something that a player just has? Yeah, you know, he's an impact player. There's no doubt. Uh, you know, last year he made a lot of big plays for us. And, made a couple big plays, not just the one he hit the quarterback, but he also caused a fumble. We didn't get it, but it, it was a very good uh, a very good angle he took in the way he finished the play. Gus, this staff has done a really good job of making halftime adjustments. Um, can you kind of take us inside the locker room? What's that like? Is it, is it calm? Is it chaotic at times? Or do you guys seem to yeah. do a good job of working? No, no the, you know, the goals would be very calm. We, we let our players, you know, use, use the restroom, get watered up, get checked out, whatever, and our, our coaches have about a, a six, seven minute span that um, you know, we talk through things and um, office staff, deep staff gets together, make adjustments, go out there and we have about a six minute window to get with our uh, players and make the adjustments and they, they go out there. You know, a lot of time, you know, our players deserve a lot of credit because coaches can have all the adjustments they want. The players have to go out there and execute the adjustment. So, uh, you know, I was very proud of our players on both sides. Anything else? All right, good. Thank you.